what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Corvus OS VS 3.1 Medusa and official build over here this is just the code name of the build and the Android 12 L version we get over here of course this is the 9th June 2022 build and yes I have tried the VS 2.1 earlier but this is the latest update as of right now and Corvus OS has been one of the most stable ROMs for the Redmi K20 Pro so let me show you in today's video why you should try this ROM First of all, let me talk about the home screen. This is how it looks like. It looks beautiful, of course. To the left of the home screen, we get the Google's Discover page. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can see all the fonts are a little bit bold. And yes, this is a default font by default present over here. By the way, you are getting the Corvus launcher by default here, Raven launcher over here. And all these app info and split top options are there in this particular launcher too. And we get the free RAM status and the clear all button, then the close a particular app, then the Google lens and the screenshot button over here. Here. and this is the free RAM bar over here on the bottom so yes on this particular launcher you are getting a lot of settings like the hide apps from launcher then a lock layout and there is the new app icons in the home screen adding and we have the Google search bar the accent search bar settings and we have the all themed icons and stuff and we have swipe to access Google app and the double tap gesture this is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen show free RAM in recent option is there and the haptic feedback you can also enable for this then there is the icon size and the font size customization so yes plethora of customization you are getting for this launcher also we do have the suggestion disabling option over here and right now let me just do one thing let me enable the always on display and from here i'll show you the few scanner speed and stuff so first of all let me show you there is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen and this is how it works as you can see this is how the always on display looks like although i have a notification over there that's why you are seeing that notification icon and here as you can see the double tap to wake and the double tap to sleep both are working perfectly fine and if you press the power button it does this kind of animation looks beautiful i would say right now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and it works perfectly fine let me try one more time from the always on display just notice there is that hue kind of animation over here once you are trying to unlock the device and yes it looks beautiful and the fingerprint scanner speed again is super fast no issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner and there is also the like screen of a 40 and stuff if you are seeing that let me show you right now it does not have the always on display on so right now if i tap the thing with scanner as you can see it wakes up and unlocks i don't have to double tap to wake to actually like unlock the screen by just tapping on the thing with scanner so that's a really good feature i would say and yes overall the thing with scanner speed has been really good and here let me show you the face unlock and right now if i swipe up as you can see the face unlock is working when i have already set it up and over here let me try one more time just notice how fast the face unlock works So yes, the face unlock works perfectly fine here, no problems at all with the face unlocking or the fingerprint scanner, both are working amazingly well. And here let me show you the app lock and this is how the app lock UI looks like. Just notice how much like this frosted glass blurry kind of effect you are getting with the app lock and yes you can lock any particular app even google photos and stuff are there and here if I tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it opens wherever I left that app. So yes. The app lock functionality is working perfectly fine here. Now let's talk about the stock camera. Here we get this proton kind of camera over here. Now this camera I have a mixed feeling about and yes, the UI actually looks a lot better than those older kind of Google cameras. But here there are not much good things I would say because yes, I have tried to take a couple of like photos and stuff. Some came out to be a little bit underexposed just like this. And some are like pretty good over here. Just notice how much details are there. So yes, this camera app is really good, but let me tell you, there are some things which are weird. Like, let me show you, if you just scroll down anywhere, you will get the settings. And if you scroll up, you will get the like focus and the ISO and stuff and the exposure as well. Right now, you can also switch to the other lenses like the 2X telephoto lens is working fine. And the 1X is of course the main sensor and the 0.5X is the ultra wide angle lens. The three lenses, I mean, are working fine. But here, even in this photo mode, there is a frame rate option. I am not really sure why that is there, but yes, this option is there. Also, there is a battery saver option for some reason. I have no idea why these things are there in the photo mode. Now, if I go into the video mode, just notice in the video mode, there is the frame rate option, but it actually does not work properly. There is a EIS option too. You can enable it or disable it. Also, there is the battery saver mode for some reason. Now, let me tell you that there is no like portrait kind of camera option. There is a photo, but if you switch to the front camera, let me show you even over here. Just notice it's kind of underexposing the shots, I would say. If you are noticing, I hope you can see that. 
I feel this is a pretty underexposed shot over here. But let me tell you, even here, there is no like background blur or the portrait mode option for the front camera. That's kind of weird. But yes, there is the night mode and stuff and the animation just looks beautiful once you're switching the cameras. So yeah, this is how the camera works. But even in the video mode, there is no resolution changing option like 4K and stuff. You can't enable it from here. But if you go into the main settings, this is how the settings panel will look like. Again, there's that battery saver mode. For some reason, camera sounds, you can disable it from here. The watermark, you can disable it and the power lens settings option is there. And also the sharpness kind of customization and a lot more color kind of things you can change. But then again, I cannot simply find a resolution changing option for videos. So yeah, this is the camera that you get by default here and it works fine, I would say, for basic pictures. But let me tell you, Gcam will be getting you a much more better picture, I would say. And I'll give some links for the Gcams in the description again. And also, if you want to try ANX camera, you can try that. Not really sure if that will work 100%, but yes, if the option is there, you can definitely try it from the description. Also talking about the flashing of this ROM, yes, I have used the latest Orange Fox recovery and I have just wiped cache Dalvik system data and vendor and just flashed this ROM and with the disable force encryption because I have decrypted storage over here. Yes, you can find a guide in the description again if you want to flash this ROM. Right now, let me jump into the settings panel and show you the about section. But before that, let me show you this is how the settings panel looks like. Looks beautiful. We have the device settings right here, the Corva settings right here. So you can switch just like this very like convenient i would say and if you tap here you will get this welcome screen where it will show the corvus version and stuff just like this and open raven disk option is there and from here you can actually check for updates things are like uh, much more different and much more optimized than other roms so here inside android version it's not that much interesting because you are you will only get the android version and stuff and if you make this clock to like 12 o'clock you will get this android 12 easter egg let me go back the security patch is of May 5th, 2022 for some reason. It's not June security patch yet. Not really sure why. And here we have the SLINUX status as enforcing and the stock kernel you can see from right here. In the system panel, this is how it looks like again. And we have the gesture settings right here. The quickly open camera is there. The system navigation gestures are there. If you go into the settings, we have the swipe to invoke assistant. And this is how it will work. Let me scroll down. We have the pill length customization, but there is no thickness customization over here. But there is a haptic feedback, IME button space and the hide nav bar option. And you also get the two button and three button navigations over here. And here we have the one handed mode that works fine. The swipe to screenshot. And yes, that works fine too. There is the share, edit and delete option. Also the capture mode will appear if you are somewhere where there is a lot of scrolling space. Enable advanced restart option is there. Let me go back. We have the pop-up camera settings. We do have the camera calibration over here for the front camera or motorized front camera and the pop-up camera sound effects are there. These are the sound effects that you will get. The front camera raise dialog you can also enable and the camera effects options are there. So this is how the system panel will look like. Now let me show you the quick setting panel. This is how it will look like and I have definitely customized it. I have been using it with the Akira's icon and here just notice there is the Bluetooth battery stats in even in the status bar it appears once you're connected to a Bluetooth device. By the way, once you're connected to the Bluetooth device, this is how the volume control will look like. Looks beautiful, I would say. And just like this, you can actually get the like device switching option. For some reason, I have just switched to the white theme. That's why it looks like this weirdly. Not really sure why. But yes, it looks beautiful if you restart the device, I would say. And here, if I click on the settings icon, just notice this is how the like expanded volume panels will appear. Just like this. Animations looks beautiful. And again, here in the quick setting panel, the Wi-Fi, mobile data, and the Bluetooth battery kind of thing appears. The flashlight option is there, and the dark theme, auto rotate, night light, hotspot, etc. options are there. Always on display toggle is there. You can toggle it for charging as well. And the airplane mode, nearby share, the screen recording option is there. This is how it looks like over here. And we have the heads up, battery saver, do not disturb, data saver. And you have the device controls, the extra dim. The sound control or the do not disturb kind of mode is there and the reboot toggle is also there you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here there is the fps info and if you enable it this is how the fps will appear and yes it definitely looks different than other roms i would say when compared to other roms i mean just notice how beautiful it looks it's not like that only text and it has the gradient kind of effect in the background looks beautiful and we have the descending and the high brightness mode as well. You can enable it if you want to. This Corvus Zen is the Zen mode for Corvus OS, I guess. And there is all this like, as you can see, Zen duration option is there. So yes, this is a Corvus Zen mode. You can definitely use it if you want to. Looks beautiful, I would say.
And by the way, the brightness panel I have always shown on the bottom. That's why you are seeing all the time the brightness panel. Then we have the power menu. And from here, I would say the power menu here looks just dope. Just notice even from the home screen, let me actually show you that. Just notice how beautiful it looks. You can tap on the restart button you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot with the advanced reboot option over here but this glass kind of effect just looks beautiful now let me show you the customizations and for that we have to switch to the corvus settings that's how you switch and of course you can click over these two if you want to switch and here in the theming we have the custom color the linear lightness the accurate shades and the headline and body fonts option is there and let me tell you there are plethora of fonts but even the default font i have been liking over here just notice how perfectly good it looks and we have the icon packs changing option too i have been again using it with the akira's one let me go back to the signal icons this is how they look and we have the wi-fi icon styles and we have all these options for that and then we have the icon shapes changing option let me go back from here to the status bar we have the traffic indicator customization the clock and date customization of course you have this background kind of chip over here if you're noticing on the date up close it even looks cooler i would say then there is the status bar items from here you can enable the headset bluetooth etc icons then we have the show notification count the colored icons and if you scroll down more we have the vo wi-fi icon style and of course you can change or enable these but i don't have a sim card in the device that's why you are not seeing any kind of vo wi-fi or vaulty icons and here we have the show location privacy and the status bar option in the quick setting panel we have the brightness slider position again which i have changed already then we have the lock screen customization there is a double tap to wake on those lock screen style and stuff are there and there is a pulse but let me tell you in this particular round there is no fingerprint scanner animation or the icon customization over here for some reason and in the battery settings we have the charging animation the battery estimates the battery style there are a lot of battery styles including the icon landscape and stuff looks beautiful i have already changed those and here we have the battery percentage next to the icon option and let me go back from here in the notifications we have the heads up customization then we have the reticker ambient edge lighting and stuff then we have the buttons and nav bar control we have the long press power button toggle torch the disable power menu on lock screen options are there then we have the mask settings the unlimited google photo storage and the unlock higher fps options are there and in the normal settings right now let me show you the battery settings first this is how it looks like yes here i am quite disappointed because i cannot really see the battery temperature or the charging cycle over here which options you get in like evolution x roms and stuff but here it's kind of disappointing that we cannot simply get to see the battery temperature or the charging cycles again but fast charging should be working fine here i have tested the battery with the aku battery app just notice i have been getting about seven hours plus screen on time that's not a problem over here so seven hours screen on time should be decent for normal usage i would say even if you use it like very moderately you can get about six hours plus screen on time even with a 700 plus charging cycles battery i'm getting that so yeah the battery life is good enough and in the health section right now it shows i have about 67 percent battery health left so my battery has been used quite a lot but let me tell you if you have replaced your original battery you will be getting much much better battery life over here let me go back to the sound settings and in here we have all this media ring etc volume controls if you scroll down more we have the vibrator intensity for each notification ring and haptic feedback then we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option and stuff charging sound touch vibration etc you can control the screenshot sound you can disable it from right here in call vibration options are there in the me sound enhancer we have all these headset presets and the sound quality for the headphone jack and bluetooth has been amazing even we have a enable hi-fi option over here and then we have the clear speaker option you can clear your muffled up speakers if you want to let me go back to the display settings here we have the brightness level the adaptive brightness and stuff lock screen options and stuff are there prevent accidental wake up options are there dark theme the override force dark etc if you scroll down more the colors are set to saturated right now but you can of course change it and we have the double tap to wake double tap to sleep wake up on plug disabling option then inside over here we again have the dc dimming and the high brightness mode but let me tell you one thing even if i enable the dark theme here we do not have any pitch black option i don't see okay so let me show you even with the maximum brightness i hope you can see it right now that the background is not pitch black over here as you can see there is the override force dark mode option is there but yes i cannot really see the background to be getting completely like black or something so this is what i have been noticing i would say for some reason the dark theme does not have the pitch black option over here but that might be fixed in the future updates not really sure why there is no pitch black option but yeah that's how it is as of right now in the security settings you will get the like quick unlock and stuff and i have already showed you the thing bit scanner speed and the app lock stuff so yeah i'm not gonna like get into that right now 
but right now let me actually tell you that in the stock launcher again we have all these animations working fine and here we have the safety net working perfectly fine right out of the box so you do not have to flash magic for something to get safety net passed it passes right out of the box so you can use banking apps without any worries right out of the box on this particular rom also talking about the drm info yes it is still l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p without any problems and if you want to know about the performance and stuff yes the performance has been really really like smooth over here i would say and overall the whole ui just stays buttery smooth no issues whatsoever even with scrolling and stuff you will see the whole ui just stays really smooth no problems at all that i have faced and here let me actually show you one thing that if i go into the split top mode just like this and of course again you can switch between apps just like this in the split top mode so yeah all of these are working perfectly fine and even in the recent panel the split top in the split top mode in the recent panel both apps stay together so you can use it just like this so split top has been working perfectly fine even with the whole ui performance i haven't seen any kind of issues and here are the android and geekbench score with a cpu stress test of this particular build so let me in the comments what do you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kd and tech signing off for today and let me tell you that this is one of the like most different looking rom the corvus os is back for the redmi k20 pro again only disappointing factor for me was that the battery charging cycles and stuff i could not really see so that's what i think about this rom let me know in the comments what do you guys think again this is tito signing off from kd and tech i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now